I, 26-year-old female, thought that my husband and I were on an upswing in our relationship after a long period of tension and arguing. I left him for a month because I wasn't strong enough to deal with the intensity of our relationship. I left him for a month because his dad's company, which he's the COO of, started implementing temporary remote work in 2020. However, my husband ended up being 80% remote permanently. So we moved an hour out from the city where we were previously living, and he could still do his job just fine. We also got a larger house in privacy, so he was around much more. He claimed he moved me out there because of one instance where a homeless man in New York City was getting aggressive with me and others on the subway and how Connecticut was much safer. Yet his protectiveness became more intense when we moved to Connecticut. I started seeing a therapist virtually, and while I couldn't prove it, somehow my husband's actions reflected the fact that he heard what I was telling my therapist. We'd fight over how we'd take my thumb and put it over my phone's home button to open it, claiming he was just searching for a mutual friend's contact information. I finally left him when he took me on a birthday trip and lied about the date he booked our return flight, causing me to almost miss my sister's baby shower. We took a break, and he began sending me texts of apology, or saying, have a nice day, or good luck on your job interview, and then expensive gifts and notes saying, even if I don't want to see him, he hopes for the best for me because he loves me. I gave him another chance because I had a pregnancy scare, and his dad was saying he missed all work obligations for weeks, and was crying, saying I hated him. I felt bad because I had said that if he treated me like a prisoner, I'd hate him. Things have been better. I have a job that's 15 hours a week for a property management company, and he no longer says that I don't have to work. I finally felt comfortable joking around with him and being my old self. However, I got suspicious when he started making pointed comments about certain parts of town that I had driven to for a work errand before I told him about them. My sister said he definitely has a tracker somewhere, and we got her husband to take a look around, and he found it. She told me he'd just say it's only there if the car's stolen, so I needed to leave instead of letting him lie again. I've had enough, and when I told my husband I was going to go to a park, I ended up driving to a coffee shop instead. After a few minutes, his car pulls into the parking lot, and he's furious that I deliberately played a trick on him. He accused me of hiding other things from him, but said that the tracker was there in case the car was stolen. I told him I was going to leave him, unless he confessed to the whole truth, and he called me a liar and said he knew I was bluffing about leaving him. Am I the idiot? You're being abused and controlled. You know why he said you won't leave? You already went back once. He thinks he's got you, and if you don't pack your crap now and leave... He'll be right. This is the dangerous type of escalation before he locks you in the house, before he starts keeping your phone from you, before you accidentally end up pregnant. Get out now, today. License, wallet, phone, a duffel bag. Of course, you're not the idiot, but you're about to be a statistic. Leave him today. I 100% agree. I would stop testing him and just leave. He's going to keep lying, and he might even have something tracking you on your phone. How can you ever soothe his insecurity? You both were always home, and he was still suspicious of you. You need to get your family to help you leave for good. Mini update. I've been reading all the comments, and I'm having difficulty responding because I feel emotionally overwhelmed. We've been together a long time. And for a long time, he was such an easygoing, vibrant guy. And my parents really wanted me to marry him, too. Now I still worry about him because he seems to cease functioning when I'm not around. His refusing to do work during the month I was gone was just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm scared because I only have a part-time job because he felt that a full-time job would cut into our time together. But thank you and everybody else for your advice. My sister, 28, and I, 29 male, are half-siblings who were raised by our mother, but we have different fathers. Our childhood was not a good one, and our relationship has always been complicated. The biggest reason is how bad our mother was and how we were raised in a very toxic house. 
I wasn't a great guy in my teens. I had a lot of girlfriends and very much had a reputation for not being great to the girls I was with. One particular ex of mine, Emily, we dated for two months, and I broke things off with her because I wanted another girl more. But Emily grew way more attached to me than any of the others and was hurt that I didn't want her, and I was a jerk at the time. It was a big deal to her, and for the next year until graduation, she would try to get me back, and I was a lot crueler than I needed to be about saying no. Something that helped me to grow as a person and become a better human was my sister finding our grandparents and finding good people who wanted to know us. That and growing up in college a lot helped. By the time I was 25, I had realized I was bi, with a stronger attraction to guys. Part of my issues stemmed from self-hatred that my mother drilled into me. I ended up falling in love with an amazing guy. About a year ago, my sister ended up becoming friends with Emily, and she brought her to dinner at our grandparents' once when my fiancé and I were there. Emily was angry to see me, and while I did apologize, Emily needed to be asked to leave by our grandparents because she was ranting and raving at me and expressing very clearly how messed up it was that I ended up with a guy instead of her and how I treated her. My sister wasn't happy that our grandparents kicked Emily out, and they told her she disrespected me and my family. Emily still despises me, and my sister stayed in touch with her. Emily's tried to contact me and my fiancé as well since the dinner. I found out a while ago that my sister planned to make Emily her plus one for my wedding. I told her I did not want that, and it didn't seem appropriate. My sister told me I didn't get to decide her plus one. We bickered over it, and it all resulted in a week ago, me telling my sister I wouldn't invite her then. My sister was saying I was as much of an idiot as I was back then, and how crappy it is to not invite her over her choice of plus one. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's obvious that Emily's attendance will cause unneeded drama. Why your sister wants to bring that to your wedding day is baffling, but she can suffer the consequences of her choices. It makes me question if there are some leftover resentments and issues from our childhood coming into play. Let me help you with that. The answer is a big fat yup. Of all your sister's friends, consider why she's bringing this one. Your sister's completely evil and wants to ruin your wedding by bringing Emily. You have two choices. One, invite your sister but no plus one and have security at the entrance of the venue to make sure she doesn't get in with anybody. Or two, don't invite your sister at all. Goodness, y'all are almost 30. What happened in your teens was maybe not great, but it's been a long time. And at least from what you've written, you just ended things with her because you were interested in someone else. As teenagers, the response from Emily seems over the top, unless something else you've omitted happened. But based on what you say, the main driver of Emily being angry and shouting at your grandparents' house is biphobia. Even if she still had an issue with how you treated her when you were together, which again seems odd, she'd be so hung up after so long the bigotry has no place, especially not at your wedding. My ex, Ryan, a 20-year-old male, and I, a nearly adult male, dated for about two years until he decided that he couldn't be with me anymore because we were on different paths. He decided to break up with me over text. I was so heartbroken and embarrassingly begged for him to take me back, but he blocked me. I definitely cried over a man that didn't want me. Unfortunately, my sister, 22, started dating Ryan. We all knew she was dating someone but didn't know who he was until Easter when she decided to show up with him. He was not invited, by the way. My parents instantly remembered Ryan, though, because they remembered how we used to be best friends. So it was really my parents and Ryan catching up. My sister felt relieved that we all knew Ryan already and was happy that our parents were eager to talk to him. I felt uncomfortable because we locked eyes quite a bit and I couldn't take it anymore. It didn't help that my brother, 18, was laughing at me. So I decided he wouldn't make me uncomfortable in my own home. I had to get up and leave, which I did. After Ryan left, my parents came into my room furious. They told me I shouldn't have left so abruptly and I should apologize to Ryan. They told me he was hurt by it 
and they're upset that I was acting that way towards an old friend. He ain't my friend, and I told them that. I told them that they knew he blocked me, so calling us friends was crazy. They told me we used to be so close, for the wrong reasons, and now that my sister's dating him, we could rebuild our friendship. I told them that this is not a friendship I'd want again, and sometimes people are on different paths, and my path is not the same path as his. They knew he told me this when we stopped communicating and told me that they felt I was simply being petty. My sister was also mad at me and told me I had no decorum. Crazy, because she needed to tell her man that. My brother's the only one who knew Ryan and I were dating, and he felt like I wasn't in the wrong. Ryan is now trying to communicate with me, like we're friends, and I'd appreciate it if he left me alone. I'm not going to be buddy-buddy with him just because he's dating my sister. Edit. My parents and sister don't know that we dated. They just thought we were friends. Only my brother knows. You need to tell your parents you dated, and they can either have Ryan in their lives or you. Also, block his attempts. Just block him everywhere. I mean, the only real idiot here is Ryan, since no one else knew you were dating. Ryan does this to get under your skin. You didn't come out to your parents and sister, so they didn't know about your relationship. Ryan is surely hoping you won't say anything so he can keep doing his weird stuff. You should tell your sister he's bad news and that he went out with a younger boy for years before her. Don't say it was you unless you feel safe enough. You could have your brother confirm so she knows you're not lying. To recap, you're not the idiot and must do everything possible to stay safe. Exactly. Ryan is a real scum bucket and is probably only dating your sister to row you up. Don't give him the satisfaction. Ignore him completely. Be in the same room, but treat him like the pile of dog crap he is and walk around him. Avoid contact and make a stinky face when he tries to talk to you. If your family doesn't like it, tough. Hold your head high. You've avoided being stuck with this loser. Now move on and forget about him. I, 22 female, am really unsure here. My best friend and roommate, 22 female, Amy, had been seeing a guy for two months. She really liked him, and it seemed to be going super well. Last night, she asked if I'd go on a blind double date, i.e. her and the guy she's dating, me and one of his friends who's single and looking. Initially, I wasn't keen, but she insisted, so I agreed. We got to the restaurant, a nice place in our area, and things were going fine. The friend she was setting me up with was cool, but I'm not looking right now and didn't feel any spark. We get to the end of the dinner and the bill comes. Amy chimes in and says, don't worry, our men have got this. To which I say back, uh, no, I don't mind. We'd had two cocktails each, all four of us, and it wasn't a crazy expensive place, but not cheap. A bit of back and forth happened. Amy kept insisting, it's always the gentlemen who pay. So I said something like, you do you, I'm happy to split. The guy said that they would cover it, but both seemed uncomfortable. They paid and then we all left. Amy and her boyfriend went back to theirs, and I said goodnight to his friend and went home alone. Later, Amy texted, saying her man is now contemplating the relationship because he doesn't want someone who always insists that men pay. She told me I ruined it by offering to split and should have sided with her and not made things worse. She's now saying he needs time and might not want to continue the relationship with her. Am I the idiot for this? Not the idiot. I squirmed a little when I read, don't worry, our men have got this, and it's always the gentlemen who pay? Your friend has some very outdated views about dating. All you did was offer to pay your share of the bill on a blind date. You weren't using a stranger for free drinks and dinner. Your friend's boyfriend of two whole months was, rightfully, uncomfortable with her insistence your male companions pay the bill. It's not your fault your friend opened her mouth and inserted her foot into it. I guarantee you that this is not the only occurrence where money's come up. There's a possibility that she also chose the expensive restaurant and both guys hesitated that it was too much. Your friend must have had some disagreement with her guy around gender roles or money. I would have done the same thing you did. Tell your friend to look in the mirror 
She created this problem herself. Update. Thanks so much, everyone, for your thoughts on this one. Amy still isn't talking to me. You could cut a glass with the tension in our place right now. She and the guy aren't talking either. I'm trying hard here, but another week and maybe the friendship has run its course. Honestly, I'm seeing a lot more underlying issues that can only come from communication. But hey, friendship is effectively over and I'm looking to move out. My husband, 32, and I, 30, have been married for 10 years. Recently, he told me that he wanted a divorce because he wasn't happy. He concluded that he never really wanted to be married and wanted to focus on his military career. I had always supported his career. I asked him for couples therapy because all the problems he said we had were things that could be fixed, but he refused and said our marriage couldn't be fixed. I have no choice but to let him go. However, he believes that he and I can still live in our house and live our separate lives, and he's already dating a girl from work. I cannot do this. When I told him that I wasn't comfortable with him dating yet, he accused me of wanting to prevent him from moving on. I clarified that if he wishes to date, he can do so, but I will not sit here and watch him do it because it kills me. I told him that I needed to get away from him so that I could heal, and I refused to live in the house while he went off and started a whole new life while somehow maintaining his old one. I told him I wanted to sell the house, and he's accusing me of trying to ruin him financially, especially because our mortgage is so low. I'm half a year away from my bachelor's degree, which would allow me to find a steady job. The job that I currently have doesn't pay enough for me to live on my own. However, I have a large support system that's willing to help me. So basically what I'm asking is, am I the idiot for wanting to move on with my life, even if it means that I have to force him to sell our house? Edit to add some details. Our marriage hasn't been great for a while, and I knew this. So for the last six months, I've been trying to fix things. He, however, told me he wanted this divorce months ago and was building up the courage to ask for the divorce. I know that what he's asking for is delusional, but I guess I feel bad because he gave me a portion of his GI Bill for my schooling, which he's now threatening to take away. That's no big deal because, again, I have a good support system. I'm graduating with a science degree, and I know I can find a good job with it in my area. He just assumed that since we always got along well, I would go along with his plan. Not the idiot. Remind him that both want to move forward and officially, divorcing and separating property are the main components of moving forward. Then tell him that you may consult with his CO if you feel that he's trying to take advantage of you. Surely, his CO would be impartial and helpful in the situation, unlike him. Mention that it's fantastic. The military's okay with him having an affair with a colleague since you thought it was against the rules and that you're glad the military has so many resources to assist with this entire process. And by describing how he's ruining himself personally and financially, you just have front row seats. Thank him for showing you who he really is as he saved you from a life wasted on garbage. Him. This. How's he going to accuse you of not letting him move on when he's the one insisting you all live in the same house while he openly dates other women? The only way forward is to separate entirely, which includes no longer living under the same roof. I doubt he's aware of this. I wonder if the military benefits he's getting for being married are influencing his opinions. <laughs>